you want to have one eye sharp, you've got to clamp their head. Like I can fire 50 frames in a second. I have to have my favorite lens. Hopefully this won't get me in trouble. Um, I've got to find something else to do. Good advice. Hey guys, welcome. Hello from Poland. I'm company on the road with a fellow YouTuber and fashion photographer, Peter Coulson. Today we're talking about why Leica for fashion photography. I've got 10 questions to ask Peter and we'll then see why Peter decided on Leica. This is part two of my interview with Peter. If you missed part one, I can link it below. What are your favorite three lenses if you only could use three lenses? I'm guessing again, you're Leica. Yeah, on, this on, a, on a Leica system for your, your work. Oh. This is after we've been testing lenses today, so the answer may change when he's actually No, no, I, th I think photos. I'd still stay in it. If I could only carry three lenses. Yeah. It'd... And you can have anything. I know you've got most of what you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it'd be the 75. It'd be 75, 1.4. The um, 50 Sumalux. 1.4, a spherical, not the latest one, the previous one. And most likely the 35 um, Summicron. Fron, which is this one. Yeah. Uh, there's I've something, been borrowing some, it to test. There's something really special about that lens. Okay, interesting. Oh, like I love the, I, I do love the 35 Summa Lux. Because you've got the looks uh, and I've you've got, got the, the yeah, you've got these two. Two. I do really like it, but if I could only carry three, I would jump on the, the Summicron it has. This, it just has a, a grungier feel that I really like, especially if I'm doing video. I think it's version three. It's not the latest one. It's one of the older ones, which is a, the small one. Uh, I'll do a full video on this at some point, so you can look out for that. Um, okay, so 35, 50, and a 75. And that pretty much, what about your 90? Well, I can I have three? Yeah, so you're going to take this. 75 does more. No, 75 is a must. It's my most favorite. So that's your most used lens? That's my favorite lens now. That's so the lens I've seen him use the most since we've been traveling. Yeah, it's pretty much my favorite lens, so I have to have my favorite lens, even though the 90s, I still really like the 90. It's in um, Apo M. Yeah, yeah. the 75 is most likely closer to my focal length yeah. of choice. Not one too of my, long. One of my favorite Hasselblads is 100, which comes down to about an 80 or 79 or 80 or something. Oh, you use 100 2.2? 2.2. Nice lens. So that's bringing me back to around about that same. So you're used to seeing length. a certain crop. Yeah, yeah it's a distance. certain distance. And I've always loved 50. So yeah, the 50's 50 is always going to be in there. I, and the 50 that is there for more, a little bit getting more bit fashion or doing crazy stuff. I like the 50 as well. I guess just talking on the fa fa fashion side of it for a second, do you use, do you find you need to have more distortion, say for the fashion look, so you need to use, say, a 35? And if I'm shooting a fashion shoot, there's more chance I'd put a 35 on. I and definitely. Does I, that mean full body? Does fashion even mean? if it's half body, I'd still be heading. If I only could carry out carry two lenses and shoot fashion, it would be a 15 or 35. But if you want like a flattering portraits, I'm putting words into yeah. your mouth. But if if it is, then you'd go 75. That, that's my 75. Right, especially for female portraits, I think. For female emotive work. Um, that. The look that I like, the chase, the yeah, look that I like. like. More the very eye, everything about the eyes. And then that drops off. Yeah, but I still, still, I got in a little bit into that fully wide open friggin' Brilliant. rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, but Guilty. I, I find, even when I was shooting Shay the other day, fully wide open suited there, but then I was pulling out to 5.6 and I just liked it so much nicer. So you, got, you actually got to see some of the buildings in the background, just want a blurred mess. So yeah. you could actually bring the environment into it. Yeah, it gives it some, um, like, yeah, shows where they are. Yeah, blood mess is great if you ugly backgrounds. Yeah, agree. It's um, almost too easy, isn't it? If it's you just too easy, just the blood and it's gone. The other thing is, is um, with the Hasselblad, I know that if I'm shooting at F8, it's equivalent to like maybe five, six, or maybe a bit less. Yeah. But it's sort of like you've got this band of what's in focus, or perceivable focus, yeah. and it just goes out. So you get this perfect, then it goes out. And once we come down to 35s, we don't get it. gets this the same amount, so it's at 5.6, and then falls off. Gradually. Gradually. On Hasblad? No, on Leica. On, no, on DSLRs. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. 35 mils. Mir mirrorless, yeah. Mirrorless. No, just 35 mils. Yeah. yeah, it tends to, the fall off is different. So I am found that sort of sweet spot is the sort of 2.8 to F4 
will get me at least a decent bit. So I want to get eyes through. I want to get a decent amount of the face and a bit of the hair in. I don't want to be falling off halfway through yeah, hair. Yeah, one eye sharp and one... Well, that doesn't bother well, I do that sometimes. I know it bothers you. It doesn't bother... <laughs> the one eye sharp thing... It's in, if you want to have one eye sharp, you've got to clamp their head and then put a tripod there and you're not going to get a good picture anyway. <laughs> and models don't like having clamps on their head, so... No, it's a good point. I just, even us, we're sitting here now, so I couldn't put a video on you because one eye wouldn't be sharp. Yeah. Just quickly talking about uh, Leica and the Hasbud like equivalent lenses. Uh, it's quite interesting. We're looking on, so we've been on the road quite a bit, well, nearly two, we'll be nearly two weeks. And so we've had a lot of time chatting and talking gear and everything else. And Peter pulled up some photos on his computer. And so for a bit of fun, we'll try, I was trying to guess, was it taken with the Leica or was it taken with the Hasbud? And it was scarily easy, I'd say, to tell which was the Hasbud. I just said, that's Hasbud. That's Leica, that's Hasbud, that's Leica. So there um, is the a medium format. Is, there's a crop difference. I didn't check, I didn't yeah, check yeah. that. I didn't <laughs> the, the Hasbud's got more pop. Like I think it's sharp and then it just drops off. That's that's the medium format thing. Yeah. That's, but see, the, I don't see that on the Fuji. Okay. So the I don't GFX know what, series. but see, the, the, that's not a full, it's proper. Not, no, it's not bigger. It's not a, as big a as sensor. Big. So, but I, one of the reasons I bought, originally bought the 100 megapixel Hasselblad and it wasn't, I didn't want the 100 megapixels, but it was actually a bigger sensor again. Is that true 645? Yeah. It's the same as well, if you not, shoot 645? Well, not 100 almost, sensor, almost yeah. No. It was about a 20% increase in Compared physical size. Um, and I didn't see a big difference in fall off. So, so it was a slower camera to use instead of like, I can get two and a bit frames a second on the Hasselblad, the 50. It was only one frame a second on the 100. 100. Um, which is still fine, I can still work with that, but if I've got a model, it's, they can tend to time, you yeah. click and I'll move, and you go, no, I couldn't beat her. Yeah, this is a pet, Peter, one of Peter's pet, hats that I'm, pet hates that I'm learning in terms of, you see models and every time they hear the click, they move, so it's like click, click, Yeah, click. so you want to be able to go click, click, and it stuffs them up, and then you click, I've got you again, now you're out of time, now I've got you where I want you, I don't want you on the pose. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, Pete's got a similar thing to my Patreon called Inspire, and you do a lot, like me, I try and teach a bit of what I know and you do a lot of teaching, don't you? Or sharing what you do on Yeah, Inspire. I do, I'd especially, you know, look, it's, teaching's most likely half my work. It might even be, it's most likely, yeah, it's getting dangerously above my rule of thirds with business. So um, I've got to find something else to do. I might go into um, making videos. <laughs> I said he should do more music videos with the models in. It's, uh, it looks like it takes a lot of skill. I was pretty impressed. It makes photos look very easy when you see how much work goes into making like music video equivalent where the model's moving and you're writing the music and you're cutting it all to the music. It's obviously a different skill set, but it's all with the same equipment, isn't it? It's all the same equipment. And I love it just handheld to my eye. I don't even use back screens. So I'm on my eye the whole time when I'm fil filming them. So for the 1%, 0.1% of you that shoot video with Leicas, <laughs> Peter's done some amazing videos. So feel free to drop him a message. And if he's got time, I'm sure he'll try and reply yeah. via a YouTube comment or something. Uh, right, just to finish off, as I seem to sense it from the comments I get on YouTube, people buy Leicas for the perfect camera and the perfect images, i.e. they're very sharp, so that super sharp lenses on a high res sensor. You, like me, shoot female models. So if you're shooting at 5.6 or f8 in the studio, are your photos not too sharp for the models? And if what are you doing to get around that? Are you using like, I do know some of this, but this is more for your benefit. <laughs> do you say softening filters like I try and do on Sigma lenses, if I was testing Sigma lenses, to try to make them less clinical, or are you doing something else? Um, first thing, I don't know like are people are gonna hate and kill me of this comment, but if you look at the real high end specs of all the digital cameras in the world, Leica sensors aren't that good. Right, right. compared to who's top, like Sony? Um, there's, it varies each year, but the Leica's definitely not sitting up in that top, the high, highest end quality of sensors. So, and I'm not putting Leica now, I'm shooting them, so yeah. I love it. Um, and I, ha I had a couple of people mention to me, said, why do you go Leica? You know, it's what the specs are. And, yeah. and I said, no, I don't know what the specs are, I don't care, I like the look. Right. The whole reason I shoot Leica, I like the look. I like how it feels in my hand. Something feels good in my hand makes me comfortable to shoot. The makes me shoot more. Makes me shoot more, makes me enjoy the experience of shooting, allows me to create, because I'm not thinking about stupid menus in the Sony system and just the simplicity of the buttons. But then when it comes down to the actual images itself, 
Um, yeah, I don't want super sharp. Like you've seen, I know where my workflow is my picture sharpened. But the problem Especially is, not in raw. Never sharpen your raw. It's the worst thing you can do. We'll get onto that in a second. But right. if, say, the, I know you love your Sumux 50 spherical. I know from owning the same lens that it's sharp at 1.4. Yep. So if you're going to sh stop it at 5.6, how can you make if a I've, model be happy with right, the photo? So if I've lit it right, I don't have contrast edges Touching. which bring out the skin on high, where you get all that one patch of skin looking disgusting. Like when the sun hits the moon and you see the craters. Yeah. So you, you, you don't, if you work your light right, but sometimes I want that contrast you like that I'm going to get that. And at 5.6, all I'm going to do is focus on the eyes and pull it forward a little bit to about the forehead. So instead the eyes of, are still going to look sharp. So instead of the focus plane being on, from kind of camera angle, instead of the focus plane being on my eyes, you're pulling it to the forehead. To the forehead, so right just in there. front. Just that. Doesn't that make this really sharp? And yeah, this but really normally sharp? not. But the skin's not normally bad there. Right. Okay. Where's the worst skin you see here? Right, okay. But are the cheeks behind the forehead? Yeah, they're well behind. Right. Okay. I've never looked in the mirror from the side. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's a thing I do. I just I, I see and I just I'm forever going click pull forward click. Okay. So you're um, intentionally I, pulling I'm the pulling focus forward. in front of the face. Yeah. A little bit just so it's not crazy. So, yeah, I keep on. It's hard. I what my brain says is pulling backward. But I've got to explain it so you understand. Because so it's for me, I'm pulling it backwards to, you, to me. Yeah, which is pulling but it off the, the front model, of the model. I'm pulling it forward from the model. The last thing I want to do is pull it backwards on them. Because you have to get the ears. ears, blurry nose or fake eyes, for example. And you saw that picture I showed on the workshop with the girl dead square on. And it was show, this, her, that picture, her eyes yeah. made that picture. Yeah. And I'd, the focus was pulled just off them. Because I use soft vintage lenses to try and get around the too sharp problem with shooting female models. Well, the 75 so, fixes a bit yeah, of that. Yeah, that, that, that will fix it as well. But uh, that's another way you can do it. So if you've got one lens and you want to try the same thing, it'd be similar to using, say, a sonar lens where yeah. with focus shift on an M camera, because in the viewfinder it'll look sharp, but if you with focus shift, the, the plane of focus is not where you want it when you stop the lens down. So that would do it automatically. I just can't remember if it's going to go towards the ears or if it's going to come do yeah, what I'm you want sure. it to do. You'd have think, to check, but let me know if you want me to, if you want to comment on that. I th think the thing that most people forget: back in film days, we put Vaseline on camera lenses. As soon well, as on a UV filter on your lens, UV, yeah. <laughs> Don't I put th Vaseline think, on directly on your lens. I think I think some people have actually put it on. Yeah, I'm sure they have. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next thing is we, when we first went digital, the first thing people did was went into Photoshop and put a blur filter over the whole thing, and then put a mask to bring the eyes and mouth out. So, why are we doing this in? Doing that, just have you, have, softer lenses are better, especially when you're shooting portrait. I'm not talking about wildlife and sport and architecture and stuff like I'm talking about shooting women. Yeah. We'll and if Vogue and some of the top fashion magazines in the world are happy with woman's skin being soft, the fabric of the clothing is razor sharp. That's what they're selling. Right. So you, if, I guess just again, if we're budding fashion photographers, if you need the clothes sharp. I focus on clothes when I'm shooting fashion. So I think you said to me, you focus like on the belly button. If they're full length, yeah, normally around that belly button's where I focus. And it'll just get nice, enough fall off on their face. Mm. But that's me. And, and I can only talk about how I work. Yeah, I think when I've tried to do a bit of fashion in the past, I'm so focused on faces that I'm all in on the face and then the dress is like a bit blurry or whatever. So. <laughs> clients would kill. See, this is where clients would kill me. Yeah. If their fashion was out of focus. Their products. So their product products. Are so, yeah, that, that an expensive bit of material looks cheap if it's out of focus. And they, they, if they're selling their gowns for two, three, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, they don't want the fabric to look cheap. Right, yeah. Do you stop down even more when you shoot fashion to get the crazy detail and the dresses? No, no, normally fa fashion on the Hasselblad, I tend to just shoot at F8. So five, six on a Leica Five, six then. on a Leica, yeah. Okay, if you're interested in these sorts of things. Last point, you're a studio shooter predominantly, although we've been doing like apps, well, you can correct me, but I think of you as mainly a studio guy because of what you put on YouTube. My commercial work would be most likely 70, 30. 70% okay. commercial. So that means 70% studio? Oh, sorry, 70, yeah, 70% 70 studio, 30% um, out of studio. Uh, me personally, I love natural light. But you're also really good with flash. Yeah, I have to be if I'm going to be in the studio. And you teach it. <laughs> and I teach it. Teach yeah, a lot. see his videos if you want to learn like various one light setup, two light setup, multiple light setup. And so I guess my question is, 
many people use available light with Lycus from the, you guys that talk to me. And I think flash is alien to quite a lot of Leica users, especially M users. What, how are you triggering your light lens uh, lights with your Leica camera and what lights are you using? Um, well, I use my Hasselblad. If you're using a Leica. Let's uh, say you has Hasselblad, Peter used to be an ambassador for Hasselblad. Hopefully this won't get him in trouble. No, I won't. I'm, not, I'm the one who resigned. <laughs> now you're, so at some point you're going to have to switch from Hasselblad to Leica 100%. But I've already started, see, I already know my answer and you don't know what it is. I've already started more and more with constant lights in my studio. That's what I use. So I, when, when I get back to Australia, I'll be getting myself most likely, I've got two 1200 watt Broncolor constants and I'm looking at a 5000 Who's the photographer you're talking about? Vincent Peters, has he got shoots continuous? Um, yeah, I think Vincent Peters, most of, a lot of Peter Lindbergh stuff was they built, there was movie lighting. They yeah. had great big HMIs. They set up all the lighting. He, he, like he does use flash, but a lot of his setups was just movie lighting. They set up the exact scene and that's more, um, I'm enjoying working that way more. Um, you see your shot before you even take it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I use the vintage like Leica, or well, Peter's got an M3 as well, but the advantage of using continuous light with vintage cameras, whether it's an old Hasselblad or especially the M3 and even older cameras where it's more difficult to sync lights. If you use continuous lighting, you can use any camera and you don't need any cables. And what you see is what you get, so you don't have to take a picture, check the back of the camera and say, oh no, move, move the light a little bit. So I agree, but if you were stuck with flash, if someone's got a, an SL series camera and they're trying to use flash or just about to buy flash, what triggers do you use? Well, it doesn't matter. Any. I don't use ATTL. Oh yes, you shoot manual flash. So the flash is always manual, so it doesn't matter what brand, it doesn't matter what trigger, because you're only using the center pin, you're not so using any- So any center pin trigger. Trigger, yeah. Like I, I use Nikon, Godox, Nikon Fit Godox triggers, but now they also make a Leica Godox trigger. Yeah, but that's only for ATTL. Yeah, okay. So that the only sense. difference is gonna be you can now put your camera into P for professional, and I'm have sure no it, control whatsoever over about your pictures. <laughs> I'm sure one of them, is it Sony that doesn't talk? One of them's got a weird hot shoe mount. I think it's Sony where the pins are different. And uh, so you have to use an adapter. Had, um, work no, that's one of the Sonys. Oh, is that an older one? Yeah, there, there's, we have a, a few problems with a couple of the cameras these days. Uh, Fuji's can have a problem sometimes. But I think sometimes as your user is turned off or they put it into Too many electronic menus. shutter. Okay. Where if you don't know your electronic shutter, it won't fire a flash. You need manual shutter. Yeah. And final point for people with lots of money to spend, is it worth getting the very expensive life packs or can you make do with Godox like I use? Because you use Pro Photo and... Broncolor. Broncolor, which are like, are they top two? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, but by far they're top two in the world. So if you're a pro and you're shooting thousands of frames a day, would you recommend the more expensive lights? If you can't see the difference between them, don't buy the expensive ones. Good advice. Seriously, is that important? If you cannot see the difference between the light, like the super cheap lights there's problems with, um, as they won't freeze. So when you shoot in 160th of a second with a dancer, you'll find the fingertips are always blurred and the feet are always blurred because they don't turn off quick enough. Right. Right, and the more- Flash duration, is that that? It's the, yeah, the, um, no, it's turning off the flash. Okay. Right, so um, I won't get into it, it's very yeah, technical. T.1 versus T.05 times, all this stuff. But when you, when you understand what it means, it means the cheaper lights, when you turn them down, the actual length of the flash stay, stay, stays long enough to blur. Either end or... So it's not turning off, where there's someone like a Broncolor or a Pro Photo, if we, if we dial in a flash duration of three thousandths of a second, it will be completely no flash within that period of time. Whereas the cheaper lights might have a tail off, that that's what will give you a blur at the shot. So unless you're doing, if you're doing but static... That's, I'm talking you, super cheap lights. And if you're doing static photos, it doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter at all. So if you're like, like me, static model... No, but you can, Godox is still, their turn off time, it's only the cheap, the very bottom oh, end... Oh, so below Godox? No, but even their bottom end ones. Okay. Or um, Alan Crom's bottom end ones. Oh yeah, the same as well. The same, you'll find that they're, they're the ones you'll get the blurs on. They've come up to their, anything they call pro. Yeah. Th that fixes that problem. The only other thing is the, most of the things that my lights do, like my Scoro pack, I can fire 50 frames in a second. 
<laughs> so I can put my camera onto a one second exposure, I can bounce a tennis ball, I can hit bang, and 50 frames will fire off in that second, and I'll have 50 frozen tennis balls in that. With a Leica? N Even with, with any camera. If it would do 50 frames a second? No, I'm oh, doing a one a second exposure. It. So, okay, okay. Right, yeah. so that's a um, bronze color. I can have one. I've seen pictures of that where you yeah. see like a d jump or a run or. I can do one, uh, one channel at point one, one channel at five, and one channel at ten, and I'll have the same color. Right. So the cheaper lights won't do that. There's all those little things, but the bronze color's new pack is horrendously expensive. You can also buy two cars for it, and that's without a light. I well, need a camera. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, with lighting, if you cannot see the difference, buy it because. The, the, the reason I have it, we need to fire three to 5,000 frames a day. We don't want any color shift in our lights during the day, warming up, cooling down. We don't want packs overheating. We want to be able to you know, have the packs run for 10, 15 years without a problem. But for a hobbyist like? For a hobbyist, a Godox. Godox. In fact, it used to say Allen Crom. I think the Godox are better than Allen Crom now. I think they're very been very clever with what they've done with lights. They've sort of copied jumped on the pro photo band yeah, rag a little bit yeah. and they've done it right the um, bowen's used to be really good but english silly english company didn't quite get things right try to copy pro photo but use old technology so <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately they're no, i think they've been bought out by somebody now might be running now but yeah i i don't have any godox myself i've used them once or twice so i know some of you guys use them and i use them and uh, yeah i've had no problems with that but that said, I use the last two or three years, I've been using more and more continuous. I use the LED panels for an LED light sources for lower power. But if I win the lottery any day, then I'll be very, it'll be very nice to have high power ones to emulate the sun. Well, get... there's an angler fish that we're using and they're 350 watts. You can put all Bowen's mount adapters and everything on. Awesome. And they're only, I think they're only like 300 pounds. So they're not that expensive. Okay, that's fine. Christmas present to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, like me, mostly shoots female models in black and white, so I asked the question, why not a Leica monochrome? Peter writes, I prefer to make my own black and white look from the RGB colours. That's basically exactly the same as I do with my Mr. Leica black and white presets. I can get much better results from my preset than I can with a dedicated black and white camera for the type of photo that I'm taking. All right, we'll finish it there. Uh, sorry if we've gone off topic a little bit. Um, from the original Y Leica, but hopefully you picked up some useful bits of information. Massive thanks to Peter for one invi inviting me on this trip and also for doing this with me. Um, do check out his channel, especially if you like flash photography, model photography, what else do you cover? Black and white, especially. Um, being different to everyone else because I. I strong what, views on the Strong things. views on <laughs> the subject is more important than sharp. <laughs> uh, yeah, just. And, uh, yeah, he's got, you've got 100, nearly 180,000 subscribers and you've got Inspire. Oh, yeah. yeah. Massive channel. So, uh, yeah, it's really nice to be invited by a big channel. So, And also, Peter let me shoot with Beck or while I was with Peter, <laughs> I shot Beck. So if you've not seen that video, I can link it below or something. But uh, yeah, thanks so much. And thanks as always to my amazing patrons. See you on the next video. Thanks. Cool.